Reese Witherspoon, Jennifer Aniston, and Billy Crudup are back for the morning show season three. But this season, they're joined by another heavy hitter, John Hamm. But was John Hamm worth watching for 10 episodes on Apple TV Plus? Let's find out. Hey everybody, I'm Pat. I'm the voice behind 98% of the recaps that you hear on this channel. But today we aren't doing a recap. We are doing a spoiler-free review of season three of The Morning Show, which you can watch on Apple TV+. If you do need a recap, though, I've got you covered. I've got season one and two already done. It's on the channel. Just hit the tab in the upper right-hand corner. It's either that one or that one. I don't know with the mirror effect. It screws me up, but it'll take you right to it. Now, season three is already three episodes in at this point. Okay, they dropped the first two episodes, day one, and then they've dropped bi-weekly on... Technically, it's Wednesday, but really, it's Tuesdays at 9 p.m. if you live on the East Coast. There's a little tip for you. So there's already three episodes in with seven more to go. And this season finds the morning show up against the battle that they didn't expect. UBA is on the verge of bankruptcy. Corey Ellison has put all of his funding into his streaming service, UBA Plus, and it's cost them quite a bit. With the economic turn that we've seen regarding the post-pandemic climate, UBA is kind of hemorrhaging cash. Now, UBA Plus has been successful, and one of the leaders in that is Alex Levy. She's kind of saved UBA Plus because Alex has had this really, really successful show called Alex Unfiltered. The way that I described it was kind of this hard-hitting, no-holds-barred interview show. Think like female, less douchey Joe Rogan, and doesn't seem like it's four hours. But a lot of people have subscribed to UBA Plus solely because of Alex Levy and this show. But Alex Levy doing UBA Plus isn't the only change that we've seen. Because Bradley Jackson is also no longer on the morning show, and in fact, she's doing evening news. She's currently Dan Rather. So a lot has changed because you've got one fixture of UBA doing streaming and you've got another telling the weekly news, telling daily news, um, and both of them are no longer on the actual morning show. You might be wondering what's the deal with the morning show. It is still led by Mia Jordan, the tremendous Mia Jordan, and it is now Yanko Flores and a former Olympian who's kind of America's sweetheart named uh, Christina Hunter. And those are the two lead anchors on the morning show. And everything on the surface seems to be going okay because nobody knows about these money issues that Corey is currently finding himself in. But Corey Ellison has a plan. Corey is planning on taking UBA and selling it. The only problem is Corey doesn't own UBA. It's a publicly traded company. Sybil Reynolds is the head of the board of directors. And if anybody actually would own the company, it probably would be Sybil because it's a legacy media company and it's her legacy. It's her family who started UBA. So that's where we're at and that's what makes it really interesting is you've got a guy trying to sell a company he doesn't own. Now who's he trying to sell the company to? A billionaire named Paul Marks who is played by John Hamm. So you've got John Hamm, you've got Billy Crudup, you've got Jennifer Aniston, and you've got Reese Witherspoon amongst many other actors in the show. But was season three worth it? Was season three as good as season one and two? Let's get into the actual review. The short answer is yes, and then some. This was probably my favorite season that The Morning Show has done so far because I just thought it was really, really different than anything they've done previously. I went into The Morning Show season one thinking it was going to be a completely different kind of show. right? I'm thinking it's going to be like fun, lighthearted, and whoop, nope, not at all. I got a pretty heavy-hitting, serious-topic show regarding a news station, and really just one particular show, but an ego-driven industry. And trust me, I know from experience, I work in I work in radio. There's literally, I'll show you right now, there's literally a radio show going on, going on right there. So I'm coming from this a little bit different than most viewers because I actually work in media, and I'm seeing firsthand how egos can get in the way of a show's success, how an ego-driven industry, to tap dance around those egos, how to make it work, how to take two alphas and put them in a room together, and also, maybe most importantly, how to fake it. But this show handles it beautifully. Now, the Corey Ellison character 
is probably one of my favorite characters on TV just because I love the way that Billy Crudup handles this role. But the banter between him and Paul Marks all season long, I felt like was really strong. I really liked the chemistry that Billy Crudup and John Hamm had in this season. And you got to a point where you just kept wanting more of the backstory of who this guy is. Because the Paul Marks character really is, he's just, he's Elon. And uh, I don't really think they hid that too well. I mean, the first episode, you've got them going up into a rocket that he's running. But his decision to buy UBA and get into the discussions to buy UBA and what his ulterior motives are for doing something like that, it kept me compelled to not only keep watching, but getting mad when it was like, crap, it's 11 o'clock, I gotta go to bed. I can't finish the episode. I can't finish and get to the next episode. And up until this point, The Morning Show hadn't been one of those shows for me. The Morning Show had been a, okay, this episode's done, move on, let's wait till next week, I'm fine. I'm not sitting on the edge of my seat waiting to find out where this storyline goes. This season, though, it was like that. And I was really enthralled in everything regarding not only selling off a company, but why they're selling off a company and the whole legacy media brand of what do we do? Do we just sell it off to this billionaire that doesn't have any real ties to this company? Or are we going to keep it and just try to make this thing work when we're hemorrhaging cash? The other interesting thing that this show did this season, which I really enjoyed, is they dealt with two issues that they hadn't dealt with before. The first one was they dealt with a hack, which was a tremendous episode, probably my favorite episode of the season. But the second favorite episode I had really didn't have a ton to do with the plot. It did it did forge it ahead a little bit and it gave you some backstory in some of the characters, but they went into the actual pandemic because season two ends during the pandemic, right before it kicks off. And then this season picks up two years later. It picks up in March, 2022. So it picks up post pandemic where they're all trying to crawl out of the crap that we all had to deal with for a year and a half. And it, it's, it gives really no backstory until this one episode where it tells you kind of what everybody was up to during the pandemic, uh, what they did to kind of bide their time, who they hung out with, relationships that spawned and then ended. And I felt that that was a really strong episode, even though it didn't really progress the current storyline of this season ahead. I I just really enjoyed it. And I think that's a, a sign of a really good season when you have one of the stronger episodes not really go into much of the plot line that is currently being discussed, which was selling off the company. But I think if you like season one and you like season two, you'll be into season three. But if you're somebody that buys Apple TV Plus for a couple months to watch, let's say a Ted Lasso, the morning show's there, you'll watch that, Shrinking. I think that this season is definitely worth paying the six ninety nine, whatever it is, to, uh, to, to check it out. Now, it does drop bi-weekly, so maybe you, you wait until a couple more episodes are out to kind of get the most bang for your buck and you... You binge this uh, first five episodes, six episodes or whatever, but um, it kept me compelled. I didn't think there was any filler episodes. Some people might disagree with that in terms of the COVID episode, but as I said, I really enjoyed it. But the hack episode was really, really interesting of what the hell happens when a major company has to deal with a hack. Um, I can speak from experience. It doesn't really go well. Uh, it's... Uh, it was definitely a season worth your time and I think worth your money and that's most important. Now as a part of video where I ask you guys to please subscribe to the channel, hit thumbs up if you like this, smash that thumbs down button if you thought this review sucked, but uh, I would suggest checking it out. I really enjoyed the morning show, season three.